Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well and I have no flare free day. Thanks so much for coming back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to talk about a organ in the human body that is often missed when discussing endometriosis and the impacts that it has on it. And that is the kidneys and ureters and how both have been impacted by endo lesions, adhesions, and stroma in cases around the world. I've been really clear on my channel here that endometriosis is a full body systemic inflammatory disease, meaning that it is not just a reproductive disease or a period disease disease or a pelvic disease. Yes, it does impact those areas of the human body and organs within them, but endo goes beyond those areas, unfortunately, and does impact kidneys and ureters. And it has documentation that endo has impacted every single organ in the human body. So in this video, I want to dive into kidneys and ureters and how we don't talk about it often enough. And that's not just solely because symptoms can be really hard to come by with kidney and ureter endo, but it's just because endometriosis is is still such a stigmatized disease because it has a period stigma associated to it that I think it's important to have these discussions on how it impacts other areas of the human body. So with that, let's dive into kidney and ureter endo and how endometriosis can cause silent kidney damage. So the kidneys can be impacted when one or both of the ureters are impacted by endometriosis lesions, adhesions, and stroma. The ureters are pretty important as they transport urine from the kidneys to the bladder where urine is ultimately stored in the human body. Interestingly enough, the urinary tract system is the second most common area of extra pelvic endometriosis, so it's way more common than we give credit to it. Urinal endometriosis can be limited to one ureter or both. Endometriosis on the ureters can ultimately lead to urinary tract blockages, and over time, kidneys can become enlarged due to the fact that urine doesn't necessarily drain properly from the kidneys. These symptoms over time can ultimately cause kidneys to lose function over time and to cause severe damage to the kidneys. The first published case of kidney endometriosis was documented in the 1940s, and it actually came 26 years after the first documented case of ureter endometriosis. For both, less than two dozen cases have been published since the 1940s around kidney and ureter endometriosis. The issue when it comes to kidney and ureter endometriosis is that the kidneys in the human body do not have a sensory nerve to let the brain know that there's pain in that area. Because of this, oftentimes there are limited symptoms when it comes to kidney endometriosis. And if there are symptoms, they do range and I'll, I'll provide those symptoms in a few minutes. But I just wanted to say that oftentimes kidney endo is asymptomatic, meaning that those suffering with kidney endo don't have symptoms. The disease of endometriosis can spread before somebody finds out that it's there in the human body. Now, endometriosis of the kidneys can be pretty hard to detect based on imaging alone, because when you do have imaging, the masses on those imaging can actually be related to something else like certain cancers or benign issues. When signs or symptoms of kidney endometriosis do present themselves, they're typically around the time of someone's period. The use of needle biopsies has been pretty effective in differentiating endometriosis from masses that are cancerous or benign. So that's a really positive note that, you know, outside of imaging, there is a technique that is used outside of surgery that can differentiate and kind of lead into the endo diagnosis for kidney and ureter endo. So like I've mentioned, symptoms are pretty hard to come by when it comes to kidney and ureter endometriosis, unfortunately. 33% of individuals with kidney and ureter endometriosis do have symptoms. So again, that's not the majority, but 33% do present symptoms. Some of those symptoms include urgency to urinate, as well as the free frequency to urinate. Some may experience blood in the urine or painful urination when it comes to kidney endometriosis. Other non-specific symptoms of kidney and ureter endo come with pelvic pain, which is pretty typical of endometriosis itself. The approach to each case when it comes to kidney and ureter endometriosis ranges, so each individual is different, whether there is availability to provide surgery or the ability to differentiate between endo versus other masses, it does depend on the expertise that the patient has availability to. If there is evidence of deeply infiltrating endometriosis in the kidney and ureter location, imaging can be used, such as pelvic ultrasounds. CT scans or MRIs, but again, those imaging techniques may be hard to differentiate between other masses that are non-endo related. 
Typically, when it comes to endometriosis, laparoscopic surgeries are typically a good gold standard when it comes to identifying, taking a biopsy of the tissue in that area to confirm in a lab if it is endometriosis, and then fully excising that uh, endometriosis lesion or adhesion in that area. In cases of ureter involvement, during surgery, a specialist will try to free the ureter from any adhesions, meaning that if the ureter is stuck to something that it's not supposed to be stuck to, like another part of the human body or another organ, a surgeon will try to expertly, you know, take it apart from that adhesion and make sure that there is no blockages happening. If that doesn't necessarily work, there might be a case where the lower part of the ureter is removed. This is known as a ureterectomy. Another procedure may be performed which connects two ureters together to allow urine to drain. Again, these procedures are often done with laparoscopic surgery by an endometriosis specialist. So please make sure that if you are opting for surgery for kidney or ureter endometriosis, that you have an endometriosis specialist in your area that uh, can perform that specialized surgery. I do have a video on how to find the perfect endometriosis specialist for you in your country or area, as well as additional videos on how how endometriosis impacts the bladder and the bowels. I hope this video has helped provide a little bit of insight around kidney and ureter endometriosis. I'd love to hear your experience if you have any symptoms related to kidney endo, as well as any video suggestions that you'd like to see on my channel. I'd love to help you out and do the research and provide a video to help you along in your journey. With that, I cannot wait to talk to you on the next one.